We have traveled all over Kenya to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the help they need to improve their farms, get better yields, and increase profits. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our expert advice and learn from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences as they shape up their shambas. Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Hello and welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are in Nyeri County, located between the Abadeas and Mount Kenya. A very fertile area. We are visiting David and Milka Mathenge. They keep cows, chickens, and different kind of crops. And recently, they introduced pigs. Let's go and see how they are getting on. And see how we can make them even better. Let's go! Mathenge lives with his wife Milka, family friend, and their 12-year-old son. David! Milka! Hello. How are you? I'm fine. David? Yes, fine, thank you. We are here, so what do you have for us? Come on, we show you. Good. All right, good. Good, good. The Madenges have three cows, zero grazed. There are currently two pigs. Maize, beans, a tomato field, cabbages, coffee, and three tomatoes. Looks good, Carol. What do you think? Amazing. Huh? Everything looks perfect. I don't think we are needed here, Tony. Our yeah, place is done. I think we better go back where oh, he came from. No, 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 no. I've got a problem mm -hmm. in my beans chamber. You can advise me, you can help me. Mm. Then, in my cabbages chamber, mm. there is a problem. Mm. So I want advice from you. Mm -hmm. ah. yeah. Also, I do have some problems, eh? because I've got my calves that I'm rearing there, and they have got a lot of parasites. And also there is a project about keeping pigs. Uh -huh. In fact, I require your advice. You're most welcome. And as usual, we don't walk alone. Tony, yes. we've, we've come with experts. Absolutely. Yeah. And we're going to work with you to yeah. make sure you are shaped up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's, let's get, get to work. work. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's pitch the tent and get ready for work. Wow, Caro. Yes. The Mathenges Shamba is doing quite well, but they could still do with some help. And we've got lots of new ideas that we'd like to introduce them to. Coopers have some ideas for controlling ticks and parasites. And Mavuno will tell us how to increase yield. First, I want to go and meet the newest residents here, the pigs. Ha, huh, and I'm going to check on the cabbages, just see how they're doing. Well, see you later, Carol. Later. On the way to my first expert of the day, there was some good news. The soil test results have arrived. Before growing any crops, it is important to find out how healthy your soil is. Then you know what fertilizers you need to use and if the soil needs limey. Getting the right balance of nutrients in the soil can make the difference between getting a poor harvest and a very good harvest. On this farm, the results show the pH is low and the soil is low in calcium. We need to lime one month before planting when the soil is dry. Add a balanced NPK fertilizer at planting. Let's find our farmer and give him the news. Our first expert today is Joseph from Unga. David wants to develop his pig business. Now, David. Yes. Why are you interested in keeping pigs? Yes, to do it commercially so that I can be selling them to the bush. How would you advise him from the first stage to the last stage? The first advice will be the nature of the house. Okay. You need to construct the house whereby the wrong axis faces east and the other faces west. Why the east and the western orientation? To block direct sunlight and direct weed growing and shining through the pig tree. You also need to source good quality piglets from a reputable source. When it comes to tooth clipping and uh, castration, when does a farmer do all those? The most routine management are done within the first few days of life. 
tooth creeping, ideally is to prevent the, those sharp teeth yeah. injuring the, the, mother. the mother. Tooth creeping is done at three days when you are doing iron injection. Remember, yeah, piglets are affected by anemia. They don't have enough iron in the mother's milk. Intact boars have that strange taste in their meat, mm -hmm. and most of the consumers don't like it. So castration is done before the third week. Mm -hmm. The younger the piglet is, the rest the stress, and the rest the procedure. How do I feed my piglets so that they can uh, mature properly? We have different feed for different categories of pigs. For the mother, you give 2.5 kilograms of so and winner. And for every additional piglet, you give 0 0.25. So the mother normally eats two and a half kilos of sow and winner food. When she has piglets, she needs more energy. So you should add an extra quarter kilo for every piglet she's feeding. When the piglets are born, they are with the mother. You introduce feed at seven days, where we give creep parrots. You give them up to the winning time. From day seven after birth, introduce the creep pellets to supplement the mother's milk. Give a quarter of a kilo of creep pellets per pig per day. This continues between six and eight weeks when they are weaned. Weaning is done at seven to eighth week, whereby you now start introducing it to so and winner. If you are intending to do the weaning, you remove the mother from the piglets to avoid stress. During any transition, you try to minimize stress as possible. So we do that by mixing half of the feed you want to introduce and the half of the feed you want now to, to leave. At seven or eight weeks, the piglets are now grown and they are now called sows. So introduce the sow and winner meal. Give one to two and a half kilo of feed per pig per day. When the mother is ready to be serviced again, then it's time to increase her feed. You increase one kilogram of so and winner one week before and one week after service. That is to increase the conception rate. When you intend to sell the pig for slaughter, you can give them pig finisher to fatten and you give 2.5 to 3 kgs per day. And if you are intending to get those big we call them hog. Mm -hmm. You give three to 3.5 kg mm -hmm. per day. And ensure in every stage you have clean water always. At four or five months, or when the pig reaches 40 kilograms, give Fugo pig finisher meal. When the pig reaches 60 kilograms, around six or seven months old, it's ready for sale. Feeding Fugo pig finisher meal at two and a half to three and a half kilos per pig per day gives good meat quality and low back fat. Now, how marketable are pigs? The butchers are saying they have low supply. You can also sell the piglet to the farmers. That is also another form of business. Yes, there is market for pigs. But remember, good housing and also good feeding regime so that you can get good, good pigs for market and you can make some good money. Our second expert today is Sami from Osho. Milka has been growing cabbages and she's worried about the high level of pests that are attacking her plants. For instance, here, these are pests now. Yeah. This is the cabbage sawfly. It will have uh, a damage like a tear. Yeah. It, it looks like this. Yeah. Then you have another problem we call the DBM or the diamond back moth. It, it makes damage a very nice round holes like yeah. this. Diamond back moth damage, mm. okay? So, but they are both pest. And you find that with problems uh, like this, uh, it is usually very serious when we have uh, dry times, when we don't have rains. Eh? Mm -hmm. And you also find that for many farmers, maybe even you included, these pests, you can't control uh, them using the conventional pesticides. Eh? Mm. So you'll find that you're applying time after, uh, after time, every but you, week, you every, every week. week, every week, but the problem is not going away. Mm. Mm. So for the two problems, the diamond back moth and the cabbage sawfly, we have a solution. I have two products here. One is called HALT. What is inside here is not a chemical. It's a bacteria we call bacillus. Okay. This bacteria, once you spray 
uh, this product on the leaf. Those bacteria will infect those caterpillars for the diamond back moth as well as the cabbage so fly. Mm. So upon eating uh, of those bacteria by the caterpillar, you will find that that caterpillar will go into death in about after 72 hours. Okay. So after three days, there will be no pest. Okay. So the product is called HALT. Halt. You do a foliar spray mm -hmm. to mean you are using a knapsack and then you spray the leaf. Oh. Okay. Put 10 grams of HALT into a knapsack. Mix with 20 liters of water and spray. Use HALT before you get pests on your cabbages. Then product number two is called Nimbicidin. Nimbicidin. It's extracted from neem seed. So it's an oil, okay? Mm. So how this works, when those caterpillars are there, they will be there but they won't like to feed. Number two, they will prevent the laying of eggs by insects on leaves. So pests will find it easier to go away from your shamba to go and lay eggs elsewhere. Number three, insects will have stages, egg, larvae, pupa. So there will be no graduation from one level to the next. Number four, they will not lay eggs. They will be rendered sterile. Okay. So that's how this product works against the two pests, the diamond back moth, which I'm calling DBM, mm -hmm. and the cabbage so fly. Put 60 milliliters of nimbecidin in a knapsack, mix with 20 liters of water and spray. Use Nimbecidin if you already have pests on your cabbages. Do you mix them? You can, two yes, you can mix, but I have given you two solutions. You can go either this way or you can go this way. Okay. It's good that when you're doing HALT, because it's a biological, we're using bacteria, uh. it's good that you do on the preventative basis. Okay. You you apply before, before the pest, before, the, the okay. pest comes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. They're not so, good and the spray. two solutions are all safe to use. Halt, like I said, is biological. This one we say is botanical. Botanical. It is extracted from a plant. Okay, you can spray at, at that time, then you come and cut yes. and eat. Yes, yes. and okay. even sell you only it. Need to wash. Okay. Okay. You only need to wash uh, and cook. Okay. Yeah, right. Oh, it is not harmful. Yeah, it's oh. not harmful. Okay, thank yes. you. Oh. But I wanted to know, what makes Halt and Nimbecidin a good choice for farmers who want to kill diamond back moth and the cabbage fly compared to other pesticides? Those pests develop resistance very quickly against those conventional mm. yeah. pesticides. And I said conventional pesticides are those common pesticides we find in shops. Yes. Okay. Like now, there's no way that uh, pest, our diamond back moth, will develop resistance against a, a bacteria. Mm -hmm. We said HALT is a bacteria. Yes. So there's no way you can resist a bacteria. It's not a chemical itself. Yeah. It's a parasite to the pest. Mm. And number two, we are going now biological. There's a very big concern for our human safety. Mm. So these are biological products. Osho has come up with pesticides that are not harmful to our health. You can spray today and comfortably eat your food tomorrow. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we've learned about managing and feeding the pigs. And we've learned about the many pests that attack cabbages. But on this shamba, Milka is a real expert. That's right, and that's why we've asked Milka to share her top tip for farming. In my farm, I have many crops. This month, I sell tomatoes. Next month, I sell beans, cabbages, and that means in every month, I have enough food for my family. I get married for the whole year. Very, very wise. She's made sure she had food all year round and a little money in the pocket. Well? Coming up after the break. Keeping cows healthy and free of pests. And improving soil health. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are in Karatina and we are visiting Milka and David. We have seen how to improve your pigs and look after cabbages. But we also want to find out about pests that attack cows and fertilizer for beans. So no time to waste. Let's get to work. Earlier today, Caro helped sort out Milka's problem with pests attacking her cabbages. Now I have the same problem, but with our cows. So I ask Steve, an expert from Coopers, to come and help us out. Now tell us, David, have you had problems with parasites? Okay, most of the problems that we normally have here is that uh, the animals usually get external parasites. 
and internal parasites. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it is very hard to control them because when you spray them, you just see that they are coming back. The structure is not clean whereby you have a lot of uh, dung. And those are the hiding places for parasites. We are talking about ticks, we are talking about fleas, we are talking about nuisance flies. And these are things that you can see. When you look at uh, our cow here, uh, Buko, you can see by looking at them, we have ticks. That's a tick. That's yeah. a tick. <laughs> and it is by name, it's called a blue tick. How can the farmer prevent parasites? We control them by spraying. We want David to spray the cows after every week, after every week. Okay, let's yes. go to spraying then. How should David do it? So you have to consider the number of your animals in your shed. Number two, you have to consider the time of spraying. When do you spray? As a rule, David, we usually spray our cows every seven days and we do it very early in the morning. And number three, you are going to consider the product that you are using, the mixing rates of the product. Because if you mix wrongly, the acaricide will not uh, perform as it is desired. So Steve, which products should uh, David use when it comes to spraying? We have triatics. This is one of the products mm -hmm. that we have yeah. that can control the ticks. It controls the fleas. To treat one cow with triatics, mix 10 milliliters of triatics with 5 liters of water. For large animals, use 10 liters of deep wash to get good coverage. But will this be effective in the long term? We don't to build a resistance for this product. Yeah. So what do you do with this? After using it for some time, mm -hmm. then you have to interchange. And in this case, you are supposed to use a product, another product to interchange, which is called Greenade. To treat one cow with grenade, mix 5 milliliters of grenade with 5 liters of water and alternate between triatics and grenade to avoid building resistance and keep external parasites away. Let's go to internal parasites. Which ones are these and how can one identify them? When we talk about internal parasites, we talk about worms. Actually, you cannot see the internal parasites but there are signs that you can look at to make sure that your animal has the internal parasites. Symptoms include hair falling off, rough, dull, and discolored hair, and watery eyes. So how do we prevent them? Preventing them is very easy. We use uh, dewormers to control the internal parasites. But before you use a dewormer, you have to check the weight of this cow. To find out the weight of your cow, use a weigh band. Place the band underneath the cow just behind the front legs. Cross the tape over and read the number on the outside. Use 0.5 milliliters of Nielsen Plus per kilogram of body weight and 0.25 milliliters of Nielsen Super per kilogram of body weight. Which yes. dewormer do you recommend in this case? We have Nielsen, which you are going to use for these animals because they are being milked. So you milk in the morning, you give your cow, you drum your cow with the Nielsen, then in the evening, you don't take that milk. So the next day, that is when we are going to get our milk ready to use, ready to sell. Milk the cows in the morning, then give Nielsen Plus to dewarm the cows. For the rest of the day, the milk is not fit for human consumption, but the next morning, you can milk the cows and use the milk with no problems. Do you warm your cows every three months? Cows in calf should not be dewormed three months after service and the last three months before calving down. Time to get our Shamba Shape Up team in action. The first step to keeping cows free from parasites is to have a clean and dry cow shed. Soon, David will see the financial rewards for our hard, hard work today. He'll have more milk to sell, which will pay for the medicine and leave a profit. Our final expert today is Chris from Mavuno Fertilizers. He has come to help with Milka's beans. Milka soil looks pretty good. I wonder how using a fertilizer like Mavuno can help. 
the bean is what tells us the soil is very fertile and even from the touch mm. you can feel the texture yeah, and everything I can see and that. the color is incredible. Milka tell us what do you do to your bean? It looks good. I use the manure. Very good because when you use manure in a field mm -hmm. yeah. we do get what you call residual effects. Manure does not release nutrients uh, very fast for the first crop mm -hmm. but the next crop benefits really well uh -huh. and that is very good for maintaining of your uh, soil fertility levels. Mm -hmm. Then also I've noted you do crop rotation yeah. mm -hmm. like you have uh, cabbages, cabbages, beans, that, uh, onions, uh -huh. and bacteria. Yeah. Uh, Chris, yes. what do you think of what he's done with the beans and the maize? When you plant them so close, mm. there's competition okay. for the nutrients. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can see the crop that is near the bean, the maize looks depressed yes. compared to the other maize in the field. Mm. So it's usually important if you do such mixed cropping, you leave a line or use some space between the maize and the, and the beans. Oh. And uh, what about DAP? Uh, I use DAP. Yeah, DAP is a good fertilizer when you're using it once or twice, uh -huh. uh, but not a prolonged period of time. Okay. DAP acidifies the soil for the long term. Time. Uh, when you use DAP for a very long time, mm -hmm. your soil pH goes, goes down. When pH goes low, the nit nutrients become fixed. Okay. When they are fixed, they are not available to your crops. Okay. So what happens? you start receiving what you call depressed yields mm. or very low yields yes. in the long run. Okay. So you need to adopt non-acidifying fertilizer okay. like Mavuno uh. for beans. Uh. It's non-acidifying uh, okay. and it helps also raise soil pH. Uh. Uh, when you apply the fertilizer, you do it at 50 kilograms per acre. Okay. Compared to the other crops, that's a very low rate. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the bean does not require a lot of nitrogen. Uh. If you put a lot of nitrogen to the bean, you will have a lot of vegetative growth. Okay. That is, you'll have a lot of leaves. Yeah. And those leaves may end up suppressing your, your yield. Okay. That is one of the technique in bean, in legume. To cater for different crops, Mavuno has crop-specific fertilizers, each with their own blend of nutrients, specially designed to benefit the target crop. There is Mavuno for maize, for tea, for coffee, potatoes, rice, bananas, fruits, vegetables, sugarcane, wheat, and barley. When buying Bavuno, look at the back of the bag for the name of the fertilizer that you want. How readily available are Mavuno products? Uh, Mavuno products are all over in uh, agro dealers shops. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the shops, you don't go asking for Mavuno fertilizer. Yeah. You ask for Mavuno for beans. Mm -hmm. For beans. Because you have crop specific fertilizers. Oh. If you have maize, you go ask for Mavuno for maize mm -hmm. okay. because they are all bladed differently. Okay. okay. Yes. Mavuno fertilizers provides balanced nutrition for the bean to ensure steady and healthy growth with high yields and most important, it does not damage the soil. I ask whether I can get fertilizer with bags or with ki kilos? I will say our fertilizers are, are packaged in different sizes, okay. different amounts, depending on the need of the farmer. Mavundo fertilizers are available in five different pack sizes. One kilogram, 10 kilograms, 12 and a half kilograms, 25 kilograms, and 50 kilograms. Thank you very much, Chris. When you visit an agrovet to buy fertilizer for beans, be specific and ask for Mavuno for beans. This is special because it is low in nitrogen. Well, the cow shed is finished, thanks to our Shamba Shape Up crew. So I thought I'd help finish things off by doing some spraying. No more ticks on David's cows. And Caro has been helping our Cooper's expert doing the deworming. So, no more internal parasites now either. Oh. Huh, Tony. Caro. It's all done. Yes, the shed is clean. And the cows have been dewormed. Wow. Mm -hmm. Let's hope the farmers will love it. Mm -hmm. Ah, David. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now our work here is done. Mm -hmm. First of all, David. Yeah. Do you like the cow shed? In fact, it looks very beautiful. Mm -hmm. I like it. Eh? Yes. Oh. It seems my cows will even enjoy taking their meal. Ah. Ah. <laughs> so did you enjoy the shape up? Ah, very much. Uh -huh. I enjoyed it. I have I learned a lot. Uh -huh. And I'm very happy for that. Oh, wow. Yes. We are also happy. 
Uh, previously, my cows were not giving uh, the correct yield. Eh? Yes. In fact, because of being disturbed by parasites. Mm. Now, from you, I've learned a lot. Eh? And at the same time, there's a project I wanted to start there, keeping pigs. Eh? Mm. I have learned a lot. I'm so grateful. Well, our work here is done, Caro, so... We are off to the next chamber. <laughs> Coopers are proud to partner with Shamba Shape Up. For over 100 years, Coopers have supported farmers with quality products for healthy livestock and increased production. Use CRV cement to improve your herd for greater returns. No one does it like them. They are legendary. EnviroFit is a proud sponsor of Shamba Shape Up. The EnviroFit Super Saver stoves are made to help people lead better lives. They provide cleaner, healthier, and safer cooking for your whole family. You can spice up your life with the delicious and nutritious recipes shared on the program. Get a taste of modern cooking with EnviroFit Super Saver and save your money, save your time, save your health. <laughs> 